Have you ever wondered how outside chemicals get into concrete? Well, sometimes they're sucked. My name is Tyler Lay, and I'm a concrete freaky deek. What we're talking about today are regions where the concrete is dry, and then outside chemicals hit it, that are usually liquids, hit the surface and they get sucked in. What am I talking about? Well, let's say my column is dry, dry, and let's say the wave comes up and sprays a mist or splashes up on it, and it just hits the surface. What well, may get sucked in to that concrete? Same thing may, may happen on top of the bridge deck itself. We may spray some kind of de-icing salts down because we want to melt the ice. We don't want people to slip off the deck. And if that concrete is dry, once you spray that de-icing stuff on it, it will just get sucked into the concrete. It's like crazy. And the same thing can happen if we're worried about people slipping on sidewalks. Well, sometimes we'll throw salt down before anyone gets there. Once it starts to rain or snow or do whatever, now all of a sudden we have dry concrete, we have the salt, we get some moisture on top of it, and it just gets sucked in like a straw. Well, what is this process called? Well, it's called sorption. That's drawing fluid from the outside surface into a porous media. And it happens because the inside's kind of dry. It's got some empty pores in it, and so it's brought in. Now, there are two types, two processes happening at the same time. One of them is called absorption, and it is a physical process. It's caused by the surface tension of the fluid and the size of the pores, that combination, and it's drawing it in. Now, I have underlined the word abs here. Abs, you know, like workout abs, right? That is a physical process. Your abs are a physical part of your body that helps you remember that this is a physical process. Now, adsorption is also part of this sorption, part of it, but it's different. Adsorption is a chemical process. It's caused by interaction between the fluid and the surface itself. So what am I talking about? If I had some straws and I poked them into a glass of water, that water would suck up the straw. It would actually go up higher the smaller straw than the larger straw. Why is that? Well, that has to do with absorption. That has to do with the surface tension of the material, of the fluid, and the opening of the straw. And that's the physical process. And if I change the chemistry of what the straws are, if I make them something that the water doesn't like as much, then it won't go as high. That is adsorption. Let me show what I'm talking about in terms of concrete. Now, I know this may still seem a little strange, a little, a little weird. Like, what's he talking about? Well, to show you, we're going to use x-rays again, and we're going to shoot them through concrete, okay? And we're gonna take a picture on the other side. And this is called a radiograph or just a normal x-ray picture. If you've had like an x-ray taken of your arm or your skull or your body, you've experienced the exact same thing that this concrete has. We're gonna take this sample and we're going to put some of this solution on the top of it. And we're gonna let it go inside of it over time. Now we're gonna condition the samples before we start the test. Some of the samples are saturated. They have fluid all inside the pores. We even put them in a vacuum and filled them up. And some of them have been dried a little bit. So they're about 70% full. And some of them are about 35% full. And then some of them we've oven dried them. They're totally empty. They're totally dry. Why are we doing this? Because we're trying to show you the differences in drying and how it affects the rate at which the fluid enters. So we're gonna put the solution on top and then we're gonna watch what happens. Now, how can x-rays see this stuff? Well, if I just put water, x-rays can't see water, but I'm gonna put iodine and x-rays can see iodine. Iodine actually absorbs x-rays. It become dark. Notice this has iodide solution on the top and it's dark. And there's a little bit of this sample that's darker than this one. Is it kind of hard to see? Well, I'm gonna make it easier for you. Here's the sample once we just started, and here's a sample after it's penetrated some depth. Can you kind of tell that this region is darker than this? 
Well, if it's kind of hard to tell the difference, we're gonna subtract the two from one another to make it easy. We're gonna take this image, subtract it from this image, and we get this picture. This is how much the outside chemicals have penetrated into the concrete. We're able to see the outside chemicals penetrating into the concrete and it's non-destructive. We can take a picture, another, 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 another. Let's do it. Here we go. Now this is a sample on the left it is bone dry. It was in an oven. This is a sample on the right. We vacuum saturated it, filled up all the pores. And then we put that same solution on top. And this is after one minute. We can already see things going in after one minute. But now let's go to five. 30. Whoa, look at all of it going in here. And there's less, there's less. Remember, this is the, this is the one that's wet. This is the one that was dry and these are in the middle. 70% relative humidity, 35% relative humidity. Here's an hour. Whoa. Two hours. This one's already through the sample on the left. Six. One day. Five. Eight. Fourteen days. Now, let's instead of looking at pictures, let's look at concentrations. This is the depth at the bottom. This is the very surface. And this is after five minutes. The blue one is the dry, the red one is the wet, the saturated one. Let's watch how they penetrate. The dry is just shooting through, look at that. Like a freight train, just passing through it, just, just sucking it in. Now look at the wet. Now why is it going slower? Well, because those ions are swimming. And the ones in the middle are kind of swimming and kind of being pulled. There's six hours, there's a day, two days, five, eight days, 14 days. Pretty cool, right? This is sorption to different degrees. This is the total dry one, this is the total wet one, and look at these in the middle. Just a little bit of drying will actually make things a lot worse. And a lot of drying makes things pretty bad. And as always, there's a concrete test to evaluate this. Of course, ASTM C1585 is where you take a hockey puck of concrete and you put an impermeable membrane on two sides. You have an open top and an open bottom. You actually dry it out in an oven, okay? And then you place it into water. And what's gonna happen is that water is going to get sucked into that concrete. And you take it out and you weigh it again and again and again. You put it back in. And what's going to happen? We're going to, we've seen this before. This is the surface and that the concentration is just going to shoot through. Okay, just shoot right through. And it's going to have a first front that moves through. And then there'll be a secondary front where this back end starts to fill up. Now, if we plotted the volume of water divided by area on the y-axis and on the x-axis, we have the square root of time. Yep, the square root of time. You'll actually see there's two lines. The first line, the first slope tells you about the smaller pores. The second slope tells you something about the larger pores, some kind of idea on how this water goes into this concrete and fills it up. Hey, thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you like it. Leave me a comment below and hit the bell.